Здравствуйте, доброе утро, добрый день. Меня зовут Вера Алексеевна Полякова Норвуд. Добро пожаловать на урок русского языка. Сейчас вы в школе. Сейчас вы на уроке. Вы изучаете русский язык. На уроке мы говорим, читаем и пишем по-русски. Мы изучаем русский язык. We have completed урок номер семь. Урок номер семь. So it's time for us to review everything that we learned from урок номер семь. So that you can go ahead and take that test. So today we are reviewing for test number seven. Let's begin with times. With time and hours. Do you remember how we ask about time? Который сейчас час. Который сейчас час. And say this one more time. Который сейчас час. Итак, который сейчас час. If it's one o'clock, what do we say? Сейчас час. When it's two o'clock, we say сейчас два часа. And now be careful. What do we say when it's five o'clock? Сейчас пять часов. Пять часов. So let's take a look at this. Сейчас час. Сейчас два часа. Сейчас три часа. Сейчас четыре часа. With numbers два, три and четыре, we use the word часа with the I ending on it. But when we reach five, we have to change the ending. We say пять часов. And we are going to stay, to stay with that of ending for a while. Пять часов, сейчас шесть часов. And then we say сейчас семь часов, сейчас восемь часов, сейчас девять часов, сейчас десять часов, сейчас одиннадцать часов. And at noon or at midnight we say сейчас двенадцать часов. Хорошо. So everybody remembers the rule. So let's take a look at these little clocks and I want you to identify the time. And also you remember that in Russia we simply use a point between hours and minutes. So this is not a mistake, we're just doing this times the Russian way. Итак, который час? Который сейчас час? Сейчас Три часа. Сейчас три часа. Is that what you said? Хорошо. А сейчас? Который сейчас час? Сейчас восемь часов. Сейчас восемь часов. Хорошо. А сейчас? Сейчас час. Сейчас час. Хорошо. Который сейчас час? Сейчас два часа. Сейчас два часа. Хорошо. А сейчас который час? Сейчас шесть часов. Сейчас шесть часов. Хорошо. Хорошо. So everybody remembers that when it's one o'clock we say сейчас час. When we use numbers два, три, четыре, we say два часа, три часа, 
четыре часа. We are still using the word час, but we are putting the a ending on it. Часа. Два часа, три часа, четыре часа. But with numbers five and higher, we say часов with the o v ending. Часов. Пять часов, шесть часов, семь часов, etc. Хорошо. Хорошо. Now let's talk about who goes where in the morning. Кто куда идет утром. I hope that everybody worked on that text from the textbook very hard and you still remember. Кто куда идет утром. Иван Иванович идет в гараж. Анна Петровна идет в школу. Нина идет в школу. А Максим? Максим идет в детский сад. So let's take a look at this paragraph. Иван Иванович идет на работу в гараж. Анна Петровна идет в школу. Нина идет в школу. Максим идет в детский сад. Please read this paragraph out loud in your classrooms. Хорошо, хорошо. Мы знаем, что Иван Иванович идет на работу в гараж, Анна Петровна идет в школу, Нина идет в школу, а Максим идет в детский сад. So in the morning everybody is in a hurry to get to work. Утром все спешат на работу. Утром все спешат. Everybody is in a hurry. Everybody hurries. Утром все спешат на работу. Well, на работу expresses their destination, where they are trying to get. Right? And which case do we use when we express destination? The accusative case. So let's practice expressing where people are trying to get in the morning, where they are in a hurry to get. So we'll take a look at this exercise. Notice the question at the top. Куда они спешат утром? Now where do they hurry in the morning? Куда они спешат утром? And we are looking at three situations. Нина учится в школе. Андрей работает на заводе. Виктор учится в институте. I want you to answer this question. Куда они спешат утром? Where each of these people hurries to get in the morning? So, get down to work. Хорошо. So let's see what you have here. We know that Nina учится в школе. 
So we can assume that Nina спешит в школу. В школу is her destination, to school. And we are using the accusative case to express this. Nina спешит в школу. Андрей, Андрей работает на заводе. So we can say Андрей спешит на работу. Uh, he hurries to get to work. Андрей спешит на работу. Виктор спешит в институт. Виктор studies at the institute and that's where he tries to get in the morning. Виктор спешит в институт. В институт. So let me ask you one more time. Which case do we use to express a person's destination? The accusative case. We use the accusative case to express destination, to express where people are trying to get. Please remember about that. We use the prepositional case to express where people are, where they work, where they live. But when it comes to where they are trying to go, where they are trying to get, their destination, we switch to the accusative case. Nina спешит в школу. Victor спешит в институт. А Андрей спешит на завод. We are using the accusative case to express people's destination. Ну, хорошо. So, let's Let's take a look at this. I want everybody to remember this. We are talking about expressing destination. We are using the accusative case to do this. В парк, в институт, в кинотеатр, в школу, в библиотеку. In the accusative case, feminine nouns change their endings from a to u. В школу, в библиотеку. But masculine nouns stay the same. В парк, в институт, в кинотеатр. Also, when we work with destination, we have to be careful with prepositions. Most of the Russian nouns take the preposition в. В парк, в институт, в кинотеатр, в школу, в библиотеку. But you know that there is a group of nouns that go with the preposition на. And we need to take a look at this group. На работу, to work, на фабрику, to the factory, на почту, to the post office, на завод, to the plant, and на стройку, to the construction site. На работу, на фабрику, на почту, на завод, на стройку. And yes, you need to remember this. Memorize the now words, and that, that way they are always there in your memory. You know your now phrases. So expressing destination is definitely one of those things that you need to know very well for test number seven. Another thing that you will have to deal with is adjectives and adjective endings. Do you remember all the adjectives that we learned? Well, let's review them. Let's go over each of them. So, we shall begin with новый, старый, хороший, плохой, детский. Новый, new, старый, old, хороший, good, плохой, bad, and детский, children's. But we have also learned these adjectives. Красивый, интересный, маленький, симпатичный, серьезный. Красивый means beautiful, интересный, по-английски interesting, маленький, Small or little, симпатичный, nice, good-looking, 
And you remember we use this adjective when we describe a person's appearance. And seriosne po anglijski serious. Krasivy, interesny, malinky, sympatichny, seriosny. Arasho. Arasho. So we know enough adjectives to be able to talk about things and people around us. What is that very important thing about adjectives and nouns that we have to remember? Adjectives agree with nouns in number and gender. And in the adjective-noun relationship, nouns are leaders and adjectives are followers. What should we always look at when we have an adjective noun phrase? The gender of the noun. And then if we have a masculine noun, the adjective should appear with the masculine ending on it. If we deal with a feminine noun, the adjective carries a feminine ending. If we have a neuter noun, the adjective will appear with a neuter ending on it. And if we have a plural noun, then our adjective will take the plural ending. So let's take a look at basic adjective endings. Novy journal, this is a masculine phrase. Novaya kniga, feminine. Novaye radio, neuter. And novaye journale is plural. And look at the endings on novy. This is the same adjective, but it appears in these four phrases with different endings, depending upon the noun that it modifies. Novy journal, masculine. Novaya kniga, feminine. Novaya radio, neuter. And novaya journal, plural. Хорошо. Let's just concentrate on the basic endings, because I want you to understand how it works. I want you to grasp the concept of the adjective noun agreement in number and gender. Хорошо. How do we ask the what kind of question? What kind of a book is this? What kind of a magazine is this? What kind of a pen is this? Do you remember that interrogative adjective that helps us ask these questions? Какой? So let's look at this. Какой это дом? Какая это книга? Какое это радио? Какие это журналы? And we observe the same principle. Какой is an adjective, and it agrees in number and gender with the noun in the question. So let's read this together, everybody after me. Какой это дом? Какая это книга? Какое это радио? Какие это журналы? Хорошо. Хорошо. And uh, you also remember that we use the same adjective, какой, when we admire things, when we say something like, oh, what an interesting book, what a lovely house, what a good-looking girl. Let's take a look at this. Какой хороший дом? Какая хорошая квартира? Какое хорошее письмо? Какие хорошие сувениры? Okay, now everybody, please read after me. Какой хороший дом? Какая хорошая квартира? Какое хорошее письмо? Какие хорошие сувениры? Again, we can see the adjective noun agreement. The noun in the sentence rules the adjectives, determines the endings that we put on the adjectives. So very quickly, 
let's translate a few sentences. I want you to practice and apply this concept in practice. Let's translate this. Хорошо, хорошо. So let us see what you have in your notebooks. This is a new house. How do we say that in Russian? Это новый дом. Дом is masculine, so you put the masculine ending on your adjective. Это новый дом. Mom, where is my new shirt? Мама, где моя Новая рубашка. That's the Russian word for shirt. And it's a feminine noun. So you put the feminine ending on your adjective. Новая рубашка. And you also use the feminine pers uh, possessive modifier. Моя новая рубашка. Мама, где моя новая рубашка? And you may ask this question in the morning. And number three, номер три, это мои новые друзья. These are my new friends. We are talking about two friends. So we are using a plural noun. And with a plural noun, we need the plural ending on the adjective. Новые друзья. And then we name them Борис и Антон. Это мои новые друзья. Борис и Антон. So in the first sentence we have a masculine adjective noun phrase. In the second sentence we have the feminine adjective noun phrase. And then we have a plural adjective noun phrase. Новые друзья. Just remember that друзья, friends, is plural. No? Хорошо. Хорошо. So adjective noun agreement is very, very, very important. And I want you to work on it very hard. Хорошо. And now at the end of our lesson, let's practice with asking questions. Again, we will be talking about direction and location. Hope everybody remembers that in the Russian language, this is really important. This is a big deal. Location. Let's take a look at this. How do we ask about location, about where people are, where they work, or where they live? We start with the interrogative word где. Где? Where? Where at? At school. В школе. And we use the prepositional case. It's the prepositional case that expresses location. And when you ask about location, you begin your question with где? Где учится Нина? Она учится в школе. Где работает Анна Петровна? Она работает в школе. But when we talk about destination, everything changes. Let's look at this. Куда? This is how we ask about destination. Where to? And to express destination, we use the accusative case. Куда идет Анна Петровна? Она идет в школу. Куда идет Нина? Нина тоже идет в школу. So when we ask about destination, 
we begin the question with куда. When we ask about location, we begin the question with где. Does everybody remember that? This will be clear after we have done the following exercise. I want you to ask questions about the highlighted parts of these sentences. And remember that when you ask about destination, you begin with куда. When you ask about location, you start with где. So very quickly, write down three questions. Хорошо. Хорошо. Let's look at our questions. Итак, Антон идет на завод. How do we pose a question about this? We ask, куда? Where to? Куда идет Антон? Now, where is Антон going? Куда идет Антон? We ask about his destination. So we choose куда. The second sentence says, Andrei сейчас в библиотеке. Andrei is at the library. And when we pose a question, we start with где. Где Андрей? Where is Andrei? Где Андрей? We are asking about Andrei's location. And then our third sentence said, они едут домой. Они едут домой. They are going home. And we ask, куда они едут? We are inquiring about their destination. Where are they going? Куда они едут? Destination. Куда они едут? Хорошо. Хорошо. So, right after this lesson, I want you to start working on your additional exercises because definitely you need a little bit more practice with all the concepts that we discussed during today's lesson. You need to practice with location and destination, asking questions about location and destination, expressing time, and then adjectives. And adjectives it's really difficult, so I want you to work very hard on your additional exercises. And uh, you are ready to take test number seven. This is what you need to study. Carefully review lesson seven in the Russian for Everybody textbook. When you are working on lesson seven, pay special attention to the expressions of direction, expressions of destination, adjectives, and telling time. These are the three big things that we learned from Urok Nomer Sim. How to express destination, how to deal with adjectives, and how to tell time. So pay special attention to expressions of direction, adjectives, and telling time. Так? Большое спасибо и до свидания.